Thanks for coming on today, man. Uh, just uh, first and foremost, just uh, the gold at the World Championship. What was that experience like? Yeah, it was great. It was awesome. Uh, you know, it was the first time I got to be a part of the World Championships. Uh, you know what? Not making the playoffs, obviously a disappointment uh, out, out here in Calgary. So, uh, so yeah, you know what? I, I was feeling good. Uh, my body was feeling good. I still had some juice left uh, in the tank even after a full season. So, uh, I had actually uh, approached uh, Hockey Canada and asked if uh, I could be a part of it because I'd never experienced it before. And, you know, anytime you're a part of Team Canada, uh, you always have a chance to win. Uh, and even though a lot of people doubted our lineup and whatnot, uh, we ended up coming together as a team and, and having a great tournament and winning the gold. So uh, it was, I, you know what, I, I think I speak for everyone that was a part of it. We had a really great time and um, we're all happy and glad that we went. Unreal, Luch. Thanks for joining us, man. I've never actually uh, <laughs> catched up with you in person before, and uh, it's nice that you came on the show. We got to do it this way. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. So, uh, yeah, like you said, we, we've never really got in touch before. So, uh, yeah, happy to be uh, on the show here. How, how's the summer going for you? You haven't been a, a UFA in quite a while, and uh, I imagine you're going through your summer routine and, and thinking about next year a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, I, I wanted to, uh, you know, I still felt like I had juice in the tank to, to play a little more. Uh, that's why, you know, you know, even though the World Championships is a lot of fun, it's still, I think we were over there for 25 days. So it's, it's, it, it is, it is a long time and, and it takes up the whole month of May. Uh, so, you know, that's what I was doing there. And then, you know, been back in Calgary ever since uh, to start off June. But yeah. I mean, like you said, uh, becoming a UFA now this summer, uh, lots to think about. Uh, you know what? With the whole UFA process and how it goes, I think uh, I don't. I don't even know if you're allowed to talk to teams now until, you know, the day of uh, July first. So uh, we'll see how that all goes. Like I said, lots to think about for myself. And but the main thing is, is I still want to play. I still have fun playing. Uh, still have fun competing. I uh, still have fun, uh, you know, working out in the summers and all that type of stuff. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to uh, the next step in my career. Luch, can you believe how long it's been? What was it, a seven-year ticket that you signed? Like, I, I, I was doing, you know, homework on this interview, and I sort of came up in broadcasting almost around the time when you started your career around that area at least. And I couldn't believe how quickly time has flown where this, this contract's done. You're on to your next one. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, it's funny how, how time flies. And like you said, seven year deal. And and here it is over with. And then, you know, even if you want to look at it even more, I mean, I've been in the NHL for 16 years, crazy. and you kind of, you kind of, you kind of think about it all. And it's crazy how, how fast it's gone. But you know what, I've been like, I've been really lucky to experience what I've experienced. I've been really lucky to to uh, create the relationships that I had, um, you know what? Obviously, you know the first. I would say the first uh, eight nine years of my career, a lot of ups in them, and then uh, over these last seven years, probably a lot more downs uh, than ups. But you know, it's all a lear learning curve. It's a learning curve in your career, a learning curve in your life. Um, you know, uh, like I said, I got to learn a lot about myself, learn a lot about, you know, different things about the NHL. I mean, I, you know what, sometimes you take being on a good team for granted and that's what I was on, you know, the first, you know, nine, 10 years of my career where, you know, felt like every night you were walking into the building, you were going to win a hockey game. And then, you know, you, you, you're on a team, uh, you know, that's out of the playoffs by January, February, and you kind of experience that. And, and like I said, it, it humbles you a bit because you don't really understand or, or you can take for granted being on a really good team. Uh, because even, yes, even though you're in the NHL, you know, it's, it sucks going to the rink, uh, you know, when, when you're on a, not a very good team or, or whatnot. But at the end of the day, like I said, uh, you know, I experienced a little, experienced it a lot. It's crazy how fast seven years go. Uh, so, yeah, if anything, more than anything, I'm excited for the next step of my career and next step of my life. And, you know, uh, we'll know shortly uh, 
you know, what that next step will be. For sure, Luch. You know the uh, the name of this show, so we got to ask you. You know, the Maple Leafs this year, it's no secret they're too soft. They need a guy, and you're a guy, I think, heads and shoulders, toughest guy in the league. You can still play hockey, leadership qualities. You've won Stanley Cups. You're exactly what they need. Any interest in uh, in heading back east and maybe putting on the Maple Leaf? <laughs> well, you know what? It would. Uh, you can never rule anything out, and... Uh... You know, obviously, it's a original six franchise, storied franchise. Um, you know, I've 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 had my fair share of, of rivalries uh, uh, with the team. Um, you know, and now with Brad Tree living coming in, there's some familiarity there yeah. with uh, you know him being the GM, and uh, I became obviously really good friends with uh, Mark Giordano, being teammates with him in Calgary, and. You know what? Uh, you know he's told me how much he's enjoyed it and how much he's loved, uh, you know, being in Toronto and being a Maple Leaf. And you know, even I'm still good friends with Jake Muzzin, and he had shared the, the same feelings and and how great it is uh, playing in Toronto and how great it is being a part of that organization and you know experiencing you know and and me having experience being on original six team, uh, you know there, there there really is nothing like it and. Uh, and 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 Rosie, you, you could probably say the same thing. You know, when you're on an original six team, it, it, it means it means something a little bit different. And you know what? If if there is an opportunity, I would definitely uh, you know listen to it. Like I said, you never want to rule anything out. And uh, you know, like I said, I'm sure I'll, I'll I'll be getting a few phone calls and talking to a few teams moving forward here in the next couple of weeks. Hey, we're just trying to connect the dots here. That's it, Luch. But uh, you mentioned <laughs> the name Brad Living, man. There's the connection. There's the relationship there. What, what can we expect from him in Toronto? What type of guy is he? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he, he he's done a great job. He did a great job in Calgary. Um, you know, you know, you just said there about, you know, you guys think that the Leafs are, are, are a little soft. Uh, you know, he, he's a guy that, that doesn't like having a soft team. He likes uh, having a hard team. Uh, he likes to, he likes having a team that's hard to play against. Uh, you know, he, he still believes in that. And, uh, and yeah, you know, he's, he's willing to make moves, you know, uh, to, to make the team better. And I think one thing that he's probably one obstacle that he's probably not going to have to deal with in Toronto that he, that he kind of had to deal with in Calgary is, you know, guys not willing to kind of commit long term to Calgary, uh, you know, kind of because they didn't want to be there. And, um, you know, the rink and, you know, the old rink and, and all that type of stuff. So he's not going to have to deal with that as far as having to sell the city of Toronto and, and all that type of stuff. But, you know, he I, I developed a really good relationship with him. And like I said, he uh, he's not afraid to do things to, to make the team better. So before we get to this, we want you guys to break down this scrap from uh, March 31st, 2011. I wanted to ask you, since you just uh, you talked about it a bit, uh, the whole Matthew Kachuk situation, man. Like, I feel like the, the last year in Calgary, remember covering it? I was actually doing Calgary radio last summer when everything happened with Goodrow and Kachuk, and it was just fucking mayhem, man. Like, what was that experience like as a player being in that room? And now you see Matthew Kachuk in the Stanley Cup final. It's pretty crazy how everything worked out. Yeah, well, you know what? He, he's a great player. And at the end of the day, what I've learned over my career is there's certain things you can't control. You know, I mean, I wish I was still teammates with, with guys from 15 years ago, but it just it just doesn't happen that way. And you can't get caught up in, uh, you know, guys wanting to move on, guys getting traded, good good buddies uh, getting traded, not getting re-signed, all that type of stuff. It's just the nature nature of the business and and for for Matthew I mean he 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 wanted to he wanted to move on you know and 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 he had that right and and he was honest about it so you got to give him credit about that he didn't you know he didn't uh, dangle a carrot in front of the flames and say oh I want to be here and then and then move on where, you know, he was straight up with them and said, you know, I, I'd like to move on and, and try something new. And, and you know what, he, the way he's played this year, you know, from start to finish, you know, you could almost argue that he's, he's a top five player in the league now with how great he's played. And, 
and uh, you know him, him and Bobrovsky, they've they've put that team on their back and carried them to all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. So uh, you know it's crazy when when not just one, but you got two hundred point guys, you know that don't want to stay and they want to move on, especially after the season that we had. I uh, never really experienced anything like that before, but like I said, you know, players have the right to to make the decision uh, decisions that they want, and you know, you got to live with them and you got to move on. And going back to Brad, I thought I thought Brad did a really good job of of making trades and and bringing yeah. guys in to 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 replace those guys, but unfortunately, it just didn't gel and and work out like like uh, we had hoped. And most it's, importantly, yeah. Johnny's closer to Mama Bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ann's not going to respond to that, eh? <laughs> well, if that's what he wanted, then, then good on him, you know? Like I said, Got everyone, it. everyone, uh, you know, everyone has the right to, to like want what they want. Like, ah, what should I say here? <laughs> uh, All right, let's play this clip. So, Rosie, we'll start with you. Uh, March 31st, 2011 also known as the night Jack Edwards referred to Jay Rozo as a career hatchet, man. Take us through this scrap, Rosie. We'll start with you. And then, uh, Luch, after that, you can piggyback and, and tell us what, how, how, what, you know, how you broke that one down. All I see is a career, a 30 goal scorer against a worthless <laughs> piece of shit is what I see. But no, obviously shit happens. Luch and I had my hands full with you there. I got to tell a story though. Like on the plane there, I think Matthew Lombardi was near me on the plane. He's like, Oh, check this out, Luch. And it's, it's you when you're like a teenager, you got the headgear and it's like junior Olympics or amateur Olympics or something. And you're boxing. And someone's like, yeah, his dad was a golden glove as a boxer. So we watched that, you know, you're boxing it up. And I was like, Oh, cool. I've never boxed a day in my life, but that's interesting. And then after this scrap, we're going at it, your Jersey rips and we square off. And it's literally the next day after watching that video. And then you go into this <laughs> boxing statue and I, and I just go, fuck like i just watched how you know how to box like crazy and i was like, here we go so i don't know that was always interesting to me but i remember thinking right now going god damn it this guy's a boxer <laughs> yeah i mean like you saw i lost my grip there uh and and you obviously switched up a couple times in the fight but yeah i mean you know we're young and we're full of piss and vinegar and <laughs> we got caught up in the scrum there on the side and um uh, and yeah, I obviously in a place like Boston, they they loved when I when I would drop the gloves, and uh, it's yeah, just it nice. Up, it, it ended up being a really good, entertaining scrap, and and you know what? To be honest, and and I don't like to share a lot what I'm thinking or a lot what I'm doing, but I I actually do love when guys switch on me and go to lefts <laughs> because they. You know why? Because they they try to get it some in, but but what they don't realize is they leave themselves open. And oh, like yeah. you said, I do have the boxing background, and I know how to throw from the hip uh, yeah. all the way through. And uh, yeah, like if you notice, like I don't have a very big lineup, and the yeah. one guy that probably breaks me down the best is John Scott when he when he breaks down my fights. Yeah, so and and that is the boxing background that I that I had. I started as 15 years old and the only reason why I did it was to get into better cardio shape, you know. Yeah. You know, it's just something fun, something to get into shape and ended up being pretty good at it. So I had like 3 4 bouts and uh but, you know, the it, hits it, to the head, I was kind of like, uh, you know, I <laughs> have, I might have to go the the the, uh, the hockey route instead of the boxing route here. So yeah. It yeah, always amazed me, man. Like, I'm not left-handed, but I switch to lefts all the time. And every time I do, guys just go on their heels and go on the defense, like, instantly. Yeah. Not you, obviously, but other guys do. And I'm just shocked. I'm like, I just switched to my weak hand, and now you're free to throw your strong hand, yet you go right onto your heels and start playing defense. It always shocked me, but it, it worked well with guys, like you say, that don't have your background and don't really get it, and they just hate the idea that you're not in that, in that typical hold-on. Yeah, exactly. So, like, that's that's my whole thing. And even when I feel like it's coming, and I like you said, because it does startle a lot of guys, and a lot mm -hmm. of guys do go on their heels. Where where when I feel it coming, I I I like to go get on my toes yeah, <laughs> as far as that goes. 
Love it. Well, I can't believe that's that long ago, that scrap, man. But uh, yeah, of, of the ones I had, people bring that one up the most, I would have to say. So it's fun to have you on and break it down a little bit. But uh, it's just nice that Jack Edwards was on mute during uh, this show. Anyway. <laughs>